When it comes to pregnancy and childbirth, there are lots of old wives' tales about everything from predicting the gender of the baby to making labor easier for mom. Most of these are categorically untrue, but some have at least a little evidence behind them, which people often point to across message boards for expecting parents. But how good are these data? That's the topic of this week's Healthcare Triage. We've covered a few pregnancy myths before, so if you've already seen that video, you're already aware that pregnancy isn't prevented all that well by things like the pull-out method, having sex during a woman's period, having sex in water, or even by some methods of birth control, although they're still pretty effective compared to the other things. You'll also know that things like belly shape, heartburn, and fetal heart rate aren't any good at predicting the sex of the baby, and that bed rest doesn't prevent preterm labor. Conversations among expecting parents on online community boards reveal a few recurring pieces of advice that appear to be backed up by some data, mostly to do with improving labor and delivery outcomes. The two most commonly occurring have to do with eating dates and drinking red raspberry leaf tea. Tiffany, our scriptwriter and editor here at Healthcare Triage, is expecting, and she was curious about the quality of the research behind these claims. So she went combing through the literature and we thought it might be helpful to share what she found. Let's start with the dates to the research. There are a few studies that suggest better birth outcomes for women who consumed date fruit, particularly in the last few weeks of pregnancy. A 2017 randomized controlled trial found that, compared to women who consumed no dates during pregnancy, those who ate approximately 70 grams of dates per day starting at week 37 of pregnancy had shorter labor durations and significantly decreased need for oxytocin to accelerate labor. A 2011 prospective study found that women consuming six dates per day for the four weeks leading up to their due date had higher cervical dilation and spontaneous labor than those who did not, and again, decreased need to accelerate labor with oxytocin. Unlike the previous study, women in the date consumption group did not experience shorter durations of all stages of labor. Of the three stages, only their first was significantly decreased. And just to make things interesting, another randomized controlled trial found that date fruit consumption shortened the first and third, but not second labor stages. The idea behind all this is that dates are a good source of energy for the very arduous task of birth in a baby, and that cervical contractions are affected by tannins, naturally occurring compounds found in things like bark and fruit skins. And while it appears possible that dates make a difference in labor and delivery outcomes, some of the data are conflicting and include limitations such as lack of cervical examinations at baseline to determine if differences existed between groups before date consumption began and the seemingly ever-present problem of fairly low sample sizes. Additionally, a 2020 systematic review and meta-analysis of eight randomized clinical trials, and let's be amazed that there are eight randomized controlled trials of this, evaluating this relationship reported that the active phase of labor, which is part of the first stage of labor, did appear to be reduced, but there was no overall effect on the duration of all three stages. It also reported the available data to be of only low to medium quality. Likewise, Another 2020 meta-analysis of four studies reported potential benefits, but also stated that available data were weak due to high risk of bias. So the usual refrain, we need more and better studies to prove that anything is really going on here. Or, as Stan put it, more date data. So what about that red raspberry leaf tea? Claims abound that it will tone the uterus and thus make contractions more effective, and that it will soften the cervix, apparently making labor easier. It doesn't appear that active constituent the tea have been identified as being responsible for these outcomes, though there are vague claims about its richness and vitamins and minerals. Back to the research. A 2009 review of 12 articles reported that available data are limited, small, and out of date, concluding that the efficacy of recommending raspberry leaf in pregnancy is questionable. In addition, many of the available studies were conducted either in vitro or in animals, which we can't necessarily generalize well to human labor outcomes. In more recent studies, including humans, a 1999 report suggested that ingestion of raspberry leaf products may lessen the likelihood of birth interventions, including C-section, forceps, and vacuum birth compared to women who did not consume these products. Because this study was retrospective and quite small, we had to take the results with a grain of salt. 
Shortly after that study was published, a double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled trial examined the safety and efficacy of raspberry leaf consumed in tablet form beginning in the 32nd week of pregnancy. The researchers reported no safety issues and no effect on the first stage of labor, though they did say the second stage of labor was shortened by a mean of 9.59 minutes, but it wasn't a statistically significant difference. Similarly, while they reported a lower rate of forceps deliveries in the raspberry leaf group, the difference was not statistically significant, though the authors conclude that this difference had some clinical significance. So, nothing overly convincing about the current data for either of these claims. Tiffany offers her most sincere apologies to her fellow pregnant people. However, according to analysis of the research by the great Emily Oster, both kegels and prenatal yoga may provide some benefit to birth outcomes, so check those out if you're interested. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, you might enjoy this previous episode on milk and juice recommendations. We'd really appreciate it if you'd like the video and subscribe to the channel down below. And consider going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage where you can help support the show even during a global pandemic. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, James Glasgow and Joe Sevitz, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral Sam.